Hello and welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast, Closing Deals and Heels. I am your host, Kayla Hodges. And ladies, I know that sometimes in business, sometimes in the sales space, because we've always learned to try to be like men in sales, we now get to have another perspective, which is what this show is all about. And it has come to my attention from myself personally that sometimes I want to do everything perfectly. I don't know if you've also been able to experience this, but what I realized in sales calls when I very first started was that I would get to the sales call and I'm like trying to look good. I'm trying to make sure that like I have my makeup on, my hair is done. I'm wearing something that looks professional. Obviously not right now. I like the comfy side of life. Do things all or nothing. It's going to be super dressy or it's going to be real comfortable. But I would try to be somebody that I was not on a sales call. And this is the problem because I feel like so many of us also possibly might do this where we are trying to be so perfect on this call, trying to make sure we're saying the right things, looking the right way, being on script. And then when somebody says something that we're not expecting, we're like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do here? And so I want to talk about um, our ability to not be so perfect all the freaking time. Because I had this one situation where I'm on this call with this girl. And we're on the sales call. Everything's going well. I'm dressed up to the nine. I'm having the right questions to ask her. We're going through the script. We're asking about her problem. We're getting to the future, asking about her goals. She's excited. She's in it. We're doing this together. And all of a sudden, she's like, Kayla, this was such a great conversation. I really appreciate your time here, being here today. But you know what? Like, I'm so sorry. I actually have a meeting that I'm supposed to go on. And um, I have to go. And I'm just like, yo, like, didn't we just have a great conversation? She was like in tears. Like, why are she, why is she getting off the call? Number one, I'm like, didn't we schedule an hour on this calendar? Why is she getting off within, you know, 25 minutes? And then number two, why is there an issue with like her not wanting to make a decision with me? And then number three, why is there an issue with myself? Because in this moment... I'm like, yeah, no worry. I totally, I totally understand. No worries. Yeah, go do what you have to do. You know, we'll talk later. And what I noticed is that I was just like, didn't want to get uncomfortable and challenge her. I didn't want to make her feel like I didn't honor her time. I didn't want to make her feel like I didn't care that she had another meeting. I didn't want her to feel like I was desperate for the sale. And at the time, I, I really was. I definitely needed to make the money that day. And so... I didn't want to look bad. And I just let her go. And I felt like that happened over and over and over in my sales career. Something would happen in the call where they would have an objection and I would just like let them have the objection because I was afraid of what they would think of me if I started to try to challenge them. I was trying to be somebody that I was not on these calls. I was trying to be perfect, say the right thing, say the right um, verbiage, especially when I started growing in my sales career, you know, and people started knowing me and then they get on this call with me and they're expecting like the best. So I want to make sure that I'm performing the best. And the problem with this whole entire thing, if you've ever felt like you wanted to be perfect for a sales call for a station or perfect for business, wanting to make sure you're just, just right to be able to get the meeting or like whatever it is, like always feeling like you have to be something and be on all the time, what happens in those moments is that we're really not thinking about the other person in front of us. Our ego loves, absolutely loves to avoid pain. It avoids fear. It likes to be in control. And it loves to look good. It just loves to look good. And so if there's anything that ever challenges our ego where we would look bad or we would get uncomfortable or it would be painful or we would be out of a control, something inside of us is like, absolutely not. I'm not okay with this. And we go into fight or flight mode. We like to avoid or we like to fight against it. I want to challenge and give you a new perspective today um, with permission, like full unapologetic permission to be 
messy AF, to be raw, to be yourself. And why this is appropriate is because in a sales conversation, regardless of your B2B or B2C, it has nothing to do with you. Nothing. What would it look like if you were allowing yourself to drop your guard, to drop your ego, and to make the entire conversation about the person in front of you? Do not care whether or not you said something stupid or whether or not you stuttered in the call, whether or not you wore the best outfit that day, where you were truly focused down on the other person being able to get a result, being able to make a change in their business or a change in their personal life. What would that actually look like? I find that so many times in sales conversations, the ladies that I work with, my clients, you know, they're like, oh, Kayla, but I just didn't want to offend this person or I didn't want to make them feel uncomfortable. And I just didn't want to put them in a bad position because it makes you feel bad because I feel how bad they feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I have to I have to give you a little insight. Look, sales, sales is change. Like that's what all sales is. Sales is just change. And most people, unfortunately, do not like to change. That's why most people stay the same. Most people stay in the same relationship for years that they absolutely loathe. Most people um, possibly don't like their body and they don't change it, but they want to. It's just like, you know, it's comfortable not to change it or stay at a nine to five that they absolutely hate. Most people like consistency. They like everything to not change. They like to feel like they're in control which is why they stay the same. And there's nothing right or wrong with any of that. You know, like I'm not here to, to down anybody. That's definitely not my intention. My intention is to just say that if you want to go to a new level in your life, in any area of your life, it's going to require massive amounts of uncomfortability and vulnerability. And most people, unfortunately, do not want to do that. And we have to know this as, as people in sales because Without knowing this, you don't fully understand the uncomfortability that somebody must, that somebody is required to go through in order for them to say yes to the product or service. Sometimes it requires a massive amounts of somebody getting uncomfortable and realizing that they have a huge problem, realizing it so much that they're internally disturbed enough to where they will close that day. Ladies, I don't want you to have to work so hard. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Like, oh, what about quality? What about being so good at your questioning, so good about making somebody realize their problem that you don't have to do so many numbers? You can work less hard and make more money and have more time to spend with your kids or your family or whatever you're wanting to do which is going to require you to get uncomfortable to make somebody else feel uncomfortable. So inside of a sales conversation, if we just pretended like we didn't have to be perfect for a minute and looked at the person in front of us and really just gave a damn about who they are, you'd be so surprised about how easy your sales conversations would be. When it comes to looking at the person in front of you and caring about them, whether this is, you know, on the phone, on the Zoom, in person. If they're on the phone, you can't see them. Just try to hold space and not get distracted. Can you hold space for them? Can you look at them? Can you make sure that if anything is coming up for you in your mind, you're thinking about the sale, you're thinking about what to do later that day, anything where you're distracted, you shut that shit down so fast and you allow yourself to really focus on the person in front of you. One thing that I like to do before the end or the beginning of every call is pray. I pray. Um, and that's something that I do. I was like, okay, God, for this person in front of me, I'm about to get on a call with her. God, if she's supposed to work with me, great. If not, that's okay. But I, I want you to help me leave her better than I found her. Help me see her. Help me listen to her. Help me, if I can help her solve her problem, show her that I can do it. That's one thing. And so in my conversations with her, and I'm trying to figure out what, what her problem actually is, I don't care if she thinks I'm mean. I don't care if she thinks that I'm um, um, interrogative or anything else. And I'm not coming off that way because of my skill level and because of my tonality. 
But my intention is just to serve and honor her. And if she feels that, no matter what I ask, she's going to know that we're on the same team. And I think that's a difference. Sometimes we ask really uncomfortable questions in sales conversations, but because you ask them possibly with the wrong tone, or you talk too fast, or you do not have the intention of serving and honoring the person in front of you, it's possibly taken the wrong way. And therefore, somebody might have told you that, hey, you're pushy, or hey, like, I didn't like the sales conversation or whatever it might have been. I know you possibly have trauma around sales calls. (laughs) So going back to being imperfect in the sales conversation, I am willing to go wherever the hell I need to go in the sales conversation if I know this person is my ideal client because I want to remain in integrity. So before I get to problem finding, I'm always really trying to qualify this person, really try to make sure that they are exactly my client, that I'm going to absolutely serve them on a super high level. And if I know without a shadow of a doubt that I can serve this person, then I don't care where I need to go in the problem solving and problem finding state. I will ask super uncomfortable questions super uncomfortable questions that's going to make her possibly cry. And I'm willing to do so if I know that I can help her. That's really, really where you get to go in terms of wanting to be perfect or caring about what people think about you. If you're there for yourself, then absolutely your ego is going to be like, absolutely not. I don't want to make this person feel uncomfortable in front of me. But if you're really there for the person in front of you, you're going to be willing to go deep like that because you cannot have a breakthrough unless you have a breakdown. And when somebody is having the aha moment that they need to purchase this because they need to make a change in their life, they had that aha moment and they had that breakthrough because somewhere in this conversation, they realized that their thinking is not that great, which means that they had some sort of breakdown. So I encourage you to get messy. I encourage you to fail. I encourage you to try. You're not going to be good at sales and good at these conversations and good at closing on your first try. I've had thousands of sales conversations. I've had many people hang up on me. I had to learn as I went along and I had to try and fail and try and fail. And I learned from my mistakes. You don't have to learn that way. Like, please take it from me. Please take some of these um, tools and, and tricks and tips that I'm giving you because I promise you that they've come from years of me falling flat on my face and having to learn. You don't have to do that. Like just learn from me. Um, The sale is not about you. It's okay if you fail and you mess up. If you're worried more about the person in front of you than you're worried about yourself, they don't care. You can stutter. You can say the wrong question. You can do whatever as long as you acknowledge it and honor the person that called me like, oh, that wasn't my intention. (laughs) Like, I'm just trying to be here for you. There's so many things that you can do. But at the end of the day, I want you to fail. I want you to fuck up royally. I want you to try over and over and over again. Because with repetition is how you build skill. Repetition, 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 repetition. And learning how to talk to different personalities. You have to get in front of different people because different people are wired different ways. What's going to work for one person might not work for somebody else. And you need to learn how to sell to different personalities. And the best way to be able to do that is being super uncomfortable, getting outside of your comfort zone, and just really trying to show up and try. Just keep trying. You got this. Drop your ego. Sales is all about service, and you really have the opportunity, if you wanted to, to completely change somebody's life. If you allow yourself to get uncomfortable enough to not have to be perfect, to make it all about the person in front of you, having a radical change in their life or their business, and allowing yourself to be uncomfortable enough not to believe any of the fears that are coming up for them, (laughs) and allowing them to make a decision for themselves. I promise you, if you put these tools to um, to work, if you continuously listen to this podcast, join our Women in Sales Facebook group or follow me on Instagram, Kayla Living Boldly. Just watch some of this content. Please take it in. Please apply it to yourselves, to your businesses. My whole intention here is I want you to make money. I know what it's like not to have any. I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like to feel like I'm doing every single thing in the books and still not getting any damn results. 
And I want you to be able to have the skill. And I want you to know how freaking worthy you are to make the money you want, to feel damn good about yourself, to know how freaking incredible you are. That's my intention. That is my intention fully. Um, live boldly, babe. Be unapologetic about who you are and your terms. You're so worthy of all the success that you want. And if there's anything that I can do to honor you or to support you, please let my team know. I love you. Have an amazing day. We're going to fancy it all out. <laughs>